All right, welcome to Watts 3010, and we're going to be doing what's called Project One this, in this video, a walkthrough of how to create it, and essentially we're creating a single page with some internal navigation, and uh, it's going to be using techniques that were learned in the Skills One um, assignments. So we've got some foundation for doing this, but before we talk about that, let's start by forking this repository into our account. So I'm going to put it into my account, and um, we should have a we should have uh, our VS Code ready to go. Um, we will then want to clone this locally. So let's get a copy of that. And I'm working down here. Let's see. So I'm in a projects and. I think I will put this in video. Um, and 3010. And so I'm in my my working directory, 3010, and I'm going to get clone this uh, G at github.com. So that tells me I'm using SSH. Um, and we'll get that cloned. And now you can see I have the hello world in there, but um, I, I want to run watts3010. So I can actually, from the command line, just type code watts3010 project1, and that will open it up in VS Code. And so I have the same set of um, documents here. I've got the readme. and. So what we're given here in the README is um, we've got a, a comp. So this is something that you can imagine a designer has handed off. It's got a picture maybe made in Photoshop showing you um, how they see this page, the colors they've used. Um, and then you might get a wireframe. So this is where you don't have any specific text. This has actual text content that they're supplying. Um, but you do have in the wireframe a kind of cleaner look at the structure. So I've got big title, subtitle. So these you can imagine are H1s and H2s. I've got some links that will give me this internal navigation to home, recent blogs, and about. I've got a couple of social links. They're kind of one, uh, the nav links are on the left, the social links are on the right. Um, and, uh, you know, we've learned about ways to put things horizontally and to position them with respect to the sides of the page. So we have the tools for, for doing things we're seeing. Here, this is this big X in wireframe means there's an image. We've learned about the image tag and figures and, and captions. There's some text there. And then recent blogs, um, we've got images with some text kind of wrapped around them. So we've got those three running horizontally. And then in the about, we've got a couple of chunks of text. And here a button that we're going to be our call to action button. And then down at the bottom in the footer, we've got a copyright and then the name of the who created the website. So this gives us a pretty good look at where we're going. And a lot of the instructions rely on you being able to refer back to these pictures to help you, you know, visually see what you might want to encode. Um, so then there, but there are instructions. You might not get instructions as detailed as this, but you could get some instructions from a designer that would indicate, you know, um, colors, uh, just notes about it. These are going to be a little more detailed than that. But they still rely on the fact that you can refer back up to these pictures to see exactly how it should turn out. So before you go, you know, you might want to take a picture, print it out, and kind of notate it for yourself. Well, I'll make this an H1, an H2. I'll use, you know, some kind of a horizontal layout, you know, inline block, or, you know, maybe I'll use some float. Maybe I'll position these left and right using um, my absolute positioning. Uh, maybe I'll create a figure with a caption. I'll use some um, floating to get these um, this text next to these images. 
Maybe I'll use the CSS table to produce these row and column. So this is, um, maybe I would create a div with some border radius to get this button effect. So all the things that were taught in uh, Skills 1 that were exercised there, they can be used to produce this project one. So let's get started. So in these instructions, there's an HTML section and a CSS section. And so you just generally want to get the HTML in there, get your structure set up before you start styling it. Although, you know, you're free to look ahead and see where you're going in terms of styling. But I'm going to kind of follow this in order and see how that works out. So first of all, I want to um, see that I create an index with a CSS style CSS, and I want to link it in. And I'm going to also add a meta tag for the author, and I'm going to make it my name. So we can start out by uh, clicking on our new index.html. And we can create a folder here called CSS. And in the CSS, we'll create style.css. And then in our index, we'll use our bang tab. And the title, we haven't really been given directions on that yet. Let's see, what do we say? We're going to add this, con this meta tag to, let, to share the author. So I'll just put that above the title. And I will just put my name in here. All right, so that gets us um, our basic HTML. Now, and we want to link the CSS in there. So under the title, we will say uh, link rel equals style sheet href equals CSS style.css. OK, so that gives us our, our linking. Okay, so now you can find <clears throat> all the content in the in the files located in the content directory. So all the content is available here: the about, the news, the recent blogs, and the titles and captions. So that's available there, and we are asked to start by setting up some semantic HTML to provide the document structure. And to help me with this, I'm going to just grab this little chunk, and I'm just going to paste it in here. So this will just make it easier for me to see this as I'm writing it. So this is all the HTML that we're going to see. So we want to definitely start out um, in the body section with this. Uh, so we've got um, a header section, and this is uh, going to contain our nav. Or actually, no, our, our headers are not going to contain the nav. We're going to have a nav section here. And then after the nav, we're going to have a main section. And after main, inside of main, we'll have two sections. The first one will be used for that. Uh, the, the first section will be used for the about. Oh, let's see. The second section is the about. The first section will be the recent blogs. And then at the bottom, we'll have a footer. And we'll just format that. So that gives us all of these sections. Nothing is really tagged for CSS for styling, but we're set up with this basic structure. I'm going to just flip over here and use this to get my instructions. It'll be easier to go back and forth. Um, so the next thing we want to do is add head tags to the header to give and use the title captions text to get our, our headers. So remember, the headers are these two travel blog and places I've seen. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And so we'll create an H1 and an H2. 
and inside that we'll use for the main title we'll use travel blog and I'm just using copy and paste with my keyboard and subtitle okay and we might as well preview this we should see something now if I open this yes so I've got the initial that going on there and the next thing that I want to take a look at is um, the add two div tags within the nav element and um, and add an unordered list tag in each of the divs. Okay, so the so one, these are going to represent the, the two div tags or the two sections that represent uh, navigation and um, and the social links. So we are putting our social links inside the nav. So we'll say nav um, div and div, and then we're going to put unordered links. This will be our list that we can use to put and the items again will be the navigation and the social links so if we format that we are set up to start adding nav content we're going to use Emmet to speed up some of this coding because as we type out these lists this is a lot of typing and Emmet you can go look it up online code code.visualstudio.com docs editor Emmet. It's a, it's a sh shorthand for doing HTML that is implemented in Visual Studio Code. So you can take a look at that, but we're going to use it right now to uh, speed up some of this list writing. So instead of you know typing this all out, we're going to do UL LA star 3. So we're going to have three list items. And inside each list item, we're going to have an anchor tag. And this will give us the links for our internal navigation. Um, and that gives us the beginning of, of what we need for the, this will be our internal navigation. And we're going to set this up uh, so that we will have um, the uh, home as our first location and then the recent blogs as our second and about as our third. Um, and then for the social links, we can do the same thing with UL li3. And then so you can see this is kind of a common uh, structure that gets created. And so we're going to have this take us to Twitter, Facebook, and GitHub. All right, and um, some other things. Um, I want all of these to take us to a new tab, so I'll just add that here, blank. Let's just be target equals blank. And I'll just copy and paste that. And uh, that gets us going with our basic um, nav links, the links that we'll put in the nav bar. All right, so we've got the nav in. Let's take a look at our instructions. Um, we've added the nav, and we've set up the links for home, recent blogs about, so forth. So we're done with step five on this. And then the next step, the figure element should contain an image and a caption. And the image source is this backlit clouds. And by the way, we can take a look at our document here. You can see that we've got our, our, our links in there. Um, so let's set up the figure and the caption. And this goes right underneath the nav. So let's add that figure. And inside here we'll put an image. And the image again, yeah, that has no closing tag. So we're going to let set the source equal images. 
backlit clouds. And then we'll set an alt tag. And what do we have in content? Let's see. For our image, what did we say? We, we can find this image, the image source, and the caption is in the title's caption. So, remarkable place, okay? And we can verify all of this, of course, looking at our picture. Um, if we go back to the preview, we can be looking at this picture and we can see that remarkable place is what we've got in there. So with that, uh, let's put this back up here. Let's take a look at how this is rendering now. So we've got this image and we've got I'm not seeing the remarkable play. Oh, we need to put our caption in. So fig caption. And remarkable place. All right. And we'll just double check what we've got. Yes, we've got our remarkable place in. So the next step, looking at our markdown, our, is um, in the recent blog section, we'll use CSS table using one row and three columns. So we're going to add a head tag in there with the word recent blogs. And then we'll add a div for the row and three child divs for the three columns. So we're going to just be using non-semantic text here because ultimately we're going to be using some CSS to do the layout. We'll use the, our CSS table to lay this out. So let's set that up. And so then within each one of those divs, we will have an image. Um, we'll have, within each column, we'll add an image. And then we'll add the, the text from the recent blog's text in there. So let's take a look just to refresh what that's going to end up looking like, you're going to have a recent blogs, and we've already used H1 and H2, so we'll use H3, and then we'll set up a div to create the row, and then three divs inside that for the columns, and within each of those we'll put an image and some text. So let's take a look at getting that in there. So section one, and I might just put in a comment right now just to remind myself this is recent blog and this is about and that will help me to remember what I'm doing here so I'm going to have a div and then I'm going to have three divs and I could probably do this with Emmet I'm just going to use copy paste here so this represents my row and my three columns <coughs> and then oh I'm going to have a header H3, that'll be recent blog. And the div inside these call divs, I'll have an image and it will have a source equal and an alt equal. And then I will have a paragraph which represents the um, the text that's going to be wrapped around it. So let's just replace these with this. And this will give us this structure. And then we can go find the content. And we're told and we're given an order for this. Hudson River, Fort Point, Prince William. So in the recent blogs, Hudson River will be our first, and the, the, let's say the source will be images, Hudson River. Okay, and then we're going to have the same issue there. Then the next one will be images. And what do we have for the Fort Point? And 
the uh, let's see we will use uh, images port point and this leaves images Prince William and this gives us our basic structure oh geez what did I capture there let me take a look at that in there let's just take a look at it. I probably have some typos and these are really common you know get used to working with typos so we have recent blog image alt p all right i am not seeing a problem in there let's take a quick a look over here oh there we go okay uh, we do have a problem with this h h all right all right so there's no layout going on we don't have our table in place we don't have our wrap text but we've got the content in there and the images so the next step let's see is the about section so we're going to use a css table layout again with, with one row and two columns so we'll do essentially the same thing in the next section we'll have a header with about and then a, a nested div tags so let's say we do h3 about and then div and we will be learning some different ways to do these kinds of layouts but this is what we know from skills one so we've got that and then we've got the about <clears throat> within each column add a head tag and a paragraph the head tag should be news and about So at this point, we're going to use an H4 for our head for news and about, and then we will pick up the content. So we've got in here H4 news, and then we have another about in this H4. And we're not in charge of this design. We're just here to fulfill it. So even though it seems kind of funny to have two abouts, that might be something you'd ask your designer about. But for right now, we're just going to implement what we're given. Um, and then we'll look at the recent, uh, we'll look at the about section. And you can see there's an about paragraph there. So let's just put that in with a paragraph. And then there's a news section. And this looks like two paragraphs. Let's just take a look what's in the design here. Nope, just one set of text there in the about. So we'll just grab this text and put in a paragraph with that about. Okay. And that gives us news and about. Again, no CSS, no layout. Um, okay, the next thing we want to do on step nine is to set up, uh, we've got a typo there, we'll fix that. And we are, we're going to set up the call to action button, CTA, that's going to say click more. And so Take a, we'll just put a div tag in there and in the about section and we'll put a div tag saying click to find out more. So let's see. Well, it seems like we've got extra there. Huh, that, let's get the call to action in there. I, I think I may have made another mistake in here. 
which is to mix up my news and my about. But let's let me fix let me get the div div and click to find out more. And uh, yes, so if I look at my rendered code here, I have transpose these and I think these should be two paragraphs and I can see that by looking at my visual so the visual I can see there's two paragraphs and then in the about there's just this one paragraph and the and then the button so I'm going to fix that go back in here and we're going to let's see we'll take out this And replace it down here. And see. All right. So that should fix that side of it. Yes, we're interested. Click to find out more. And then in the news, we're going to do two paragraphs. So if we look at news, we're going to have. that paragraph and then this one is a separate paragraph all right and so if we look back so we should have the content and structure for news and about and then we have this this div that we're going to turn into a button um, so that gets us through the call to action button all right, so now we're at number 10 here. We're going to create a footer section with two div tags that represent left and right contents of the footer. So for the left, we will end up putting in a copyright tag using a special HTML special entities. And we've studied that a little bit. See that sometimes they can show up with a text in them. Sometimes they're just numeric. In this case, we've got a little text. So we're going to create two div tags for our two sections and we'll put the copyright on the left and on the right we're told to put our own name in. So that gives us as your name that gives us our footer. So it's down there. So I think we're getting to the point where we've got everything. What else do we have? Uh, we want to set up our links, so we need to set up an ID tag in recent blogs and an IT tag in action, and then we can set those links in our nav. So let's set up ID in section. We're going to have ID equals recent logs. And let's use the dash. I think it's sometimes easier to read. And then we're going to have an ID in here. ID equals news about. And then that gives us the ability to fill in recent blogs and news about. And then we'll leave, we'll use a hashtag for the home so that we can go home. Um, so if we look at this, we should be able to test this out now. Um, home, recent blogs, uh oh. We're not getting our recent blogs. Oh, we need our hash. So recent blogs takes us to recent blog. Let's fix that to be read blogs. So the hardest thing is always typos. And with recent blogs and then about, the about doesn't seem to be working. Hash news about. Ah, what happened here? That should be, an, oh, we took our closing section, section and made it an opening section. 
and do we have a close? Let's just make sure. Section, 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 let's format. So formatting won't work if you don't have your HTML correct. So that's one clue. It looks like we've got section, and I'm using these roll up to help me verify my sections. So those seem to be rolling up OK. And about takes me to about. Now, of course, about doesn't go all the way to the top of the page the way that news did, or the way that recent blogs did, because the page doesn't continue that far. If I were to make this you know, a smaller page, uh, it might, yes, it would go up to the top. So looks like the links are working OK. All right, let's go back and take a look at our remaining in, in the HTML section. OK, so we're going to add a favicon, which we haven't really talked about much, but they are important for identifying the tab. So you can see here we just have this sort of empty document image, whereas these other sites have images. If we add a favicon, um, this icon into our head section, we can provide it a favicon. And this icon will show up in, in our tab. So it um, goes by the name of favicon, but simple as just putting this into our head. Let's see. Right here, we can put it right at the bottom of the head. And this T is uh, just the letter T cut out of a document and turned into a PNG image. And um, with these images, um, we're going to study images more and look at the different um, formats. So PNG is a type that is probably uses up the least amount of space, provides not a lot of um, you know, detail. Like for, for a photograph, you can have a PMG, but generally you're going to want to use a JPEG. You'll see JPEGs for photographs, but PNGs are for simpler images. And this is just a very simple image. But once we get that in there, you'll see that we have a T image up, and it's just referred to as a favicon. And um, it helps us to identify the tabs. So we'll get that in there. And then we are going to add the main title from the title's text to be the title of this page. Because right now, the, the title, oh, it does say travel blog. Well, I must have got that in there. But the image text, I think it starts out when you're, um, when, you, when you first render that template, um, you see something like document. Um, but as soon as you and then that list looks very, that doesn't give any, any description. We definitely want to get a description that is something in the document. And we're just going to grab this main title, travel blogs, that we used in our H1. And, and once we have that, we have our, our favicon and our title. It's going to be very representative. So. I think we're good here as far as getting our HTML and our content into the page. So the next big step will be to add some CSS styling so that we get some layout and, and move it closer toward the, what you see in this, in this picture, in this comp. Hey, I'm going to do one more thing before I move on to the CSS, and that is I'm going to check my work in. So, Generally, I check in very frequently, and that's a really important thing, especially when you're working on a large amount of data and content and CSS, is that if you get to a point where you're satisfied with your work and you've, you know, you've, it's, a good, it's a good time to just check your work in. So I'm going to come down here and uh, do some Git, work with Git. So you can see I've got my index HTML, so I'm going to git add index and git commit dash m uh, added html content git push okay and i'm actually gonna 
go out here and have a look at my project. So this is my forked project and I can see that yes I've gotten my index checked in, I've got my CSS it's empty but I've got that checked in. So I'm going to even go ahead and put my settings together because what if I don't finish this on time? Do I just not turn it in? No. You want to turn in your work no matter on time as close to as you can to on time even if it's not done because you can always fix it later and so let's get this. Oh yes, I'm going to need to check my HTTPS box. You, you don't need to do that um, in most cases unless you've set up a DNS name. Um, and then we'll open that up. And even though this is not the final, this doesn't represent the final project, this is a significant amount of work. And if that's as far as I got on the due date, I would turn this in with an explanation that I just hadn't gotten to the CSS, but I'm going to be working on it. Um, so yes, I want to get this checked in even though I'm not done. Um, and I want to turn this in if I come to the due date and this is as far as I've got, I'm going to turn the, this link in. So let's grab that link and uh, we'll set this up as our website. And so we've got a really significant part of the project done, even though we don't have it looking the way we want it to look in the end. And there's still a lot of work to do with CSS.